Hey golfers, Drew Mahold back here at Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Thomas, how are you today? I'm doing good. That's good. The Cobra T-Rail Irons, uh, I actually just hit a few shots with a pitching wedge, a seven iron, and the four hybrid. Um, I'm not someone that should be playing, you know, a, a T-Rail or, you know, with the ultralight 50 gram shaft. Not necessarily my fit, um, but we hit some shots. I think we should go look at the numbers, yep. see and discuss some of the technology that Cobra has uh, presented to us here. Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity for us to at least get this product out for our viewers to be able to see and learn mm -hmm. about the um, about the T-Rail irons. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, you're not the, probably the perfect candidate for these irons or for this particular golf shaft. This is just what we've been sent mm -hmm. by from Cobra so we can get this product out in, time, in term for their release date. Yep. Yeah, um, I kind of want to see what you, what you think here because I, you know, I, I have a lot of interesting thoughts in my head too just about what I saw on uh, the numbers, but uh, let's go take a look. Sounds good, let's go take a look. All right, Thomas, um, you know, first impressions for me, uh, you know, it felt very firm uh, and I think the sound, at least on the ones that I hit solid, was pretty loud too, which is kind of something to expect from kind of a hollow um, super game improvement iron like this. Um, but I guess, what are, what are you interpreting from the numbers here? Yeah, so let's take a look and see how far you were hitting everything. So you're hitting the pitching wedge, um, carrying about 142, going 143. So you actually had plenty of stopping power with, with these irons. That comes down to the spin rate number. If you look here, I think you were asking me earlier how, how much spin I should have with a pitching mm -hmm. wedge. 10,000, I mentioned kind of around about 10,000 mark. Well, you're spot on right at 10,000. If I expand this, we'll take a look here. We'll take a look at these shots right here. Look how consistent that was. 9,900, basically 1,000 to two, into 1,200. So yeah. range of 300 RPMs for those four shots, that was really, really good. So you were really consistent, but was stopping on a dime for you as well. So that's, I mean, it was one shot you said, 144 going 144. Yeah. So that's <laughs> That's really good. So that's that, that's that's exciting. That's really really good stuff to take a look at. So. Yeah, and then I'm uh, moving up to the seven iron. I know, and, and gradually, obviously, uh, this happens with any set of clubs where you get less loft and things get more erratic. Yep. Um, but then I think for me, being someone who swings kind of faster and then playing a, a 50 gram shaft, um, the longer you know, longer club way I, I hit, the kind of more erratic it got. Um, but you know, with the seven iron, I, I that's probably you know, 10 to 15 yards farther than I carry mine and, um, and then, you know, for total distance, kind of the same thing. Um, but what did you think here just from looking at the seven iron? Yeah, so you, you touched on kind of the dispersion, so pitching wedge, obviously a little, little bit tighter, seven iron got a little larger, and then the four, uh, four iron got even, even larger. That's very typical. Um, it happens to clubs longer, there's, that, there's less loft on it, it's just gonna be more challenging to keep that thing mm -hmm. straighter. Um, but taking a look at the seven iron, uh, Notice the spin was good, um, so about 6,300 RPM, so that's plenty of kind of uh, stopping power. Um, you did fly it a little bit higher than you hit with the, the pitching wedge. We'll notice about 124 feet in the air. There's one here that's grayed out. That was that fin that you hit. Yeah. You notice that thing flew <laughs> all the green. That thing took yeah, off, that yeah. That thing took off, so, you know, we're only human, so oh, yeah. I, gave, I gave you a little refresher on, on, on that one. Um, we noticed also the spin rate was pretty low on that, mm -hmm. too, so we know that you yeah. missed that. Um, but yeah, everything else was pretty consistent around, you know, around about six to 7,000 RPMs, which is adequate spin for, for, for a seven iron. I wouldn't want to see it really going in too much over 7,000, mm -hmm. otherwise we're losing potential distance. Yeah. Um, but you had plenty of stopping power because you were hitting it high, 120 feet in the air, which was good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, obviously I play, you know, kind of a, a like a half cavity sort of player's iron now. So obviously looking different at, at address, a little thicker, um, and obviously a lot more weight is kind of down in the sole, yep. kind of launch that ball in the air. Um, but, you know, I got to say, I was impressed with how easy it was for me to launch it. And I, I mean, I, not all these shots were center of the face. Obviously, there was yep. the low one that shot, you know, 209 carry. Yep. Um, but not all of these were center on the face, and they were still able to go a pretty solid distance for me. So um, I'm impressed with the forgiveness for sure. Yeah, well, I'm glad you bring that up. Not all are in the center of the face. You know, you know, everyone is going to get different lies on the on the golf course all mm -hmm. the time. Whether you're going to kind of like in the rough or the fairway or kind of like a little sandy lie. Um, believe this club's got that baffler rail. Mm -hmm. uh, I know this is a big selling point for a culver with some of their fairway woods that they have. So this is going to help get glide that club through the, the surface, no matter what kind of surface you're on, which is yeah. good. So that'll help for forgiveness mm -hmm. for sure. 
yeah, I know people that have played these the Cobra Woods hybrids in the past with this rail um, technology on the sole has really helped them through thick lies in the rough, even through bunkers. Um, you know, that's it, the playability factor, right? Cobra goes goes after that quite a bit, especially with clubs like this, where anybody can play them, uh, especially from the rough. These are supposed to be, you know, really effective. So. Full hybrid, you mentioned maybe it felt a little bit shorter than what you would yeah. be ex expecting. Um, did you feel like you had decent con control with, with it? Obviously, the challenge was this is a 50 gram shaft, yeah. so maybe not the best control for your, your club speed. Um, how did the length feel? Length felt, you know, good. Um, it, it was, like I said, the, you know, I, my four iron, I guess I play now is, you know, 220 or so is probably my distance, maybe yep. a little bit less. Um, four hybrid, obviously there's, you know, hybrids always go farther than irons, but this thing was a rocket compared to you know, my four iron. You know, looking at the numbers, I was kind of, you know, the spin was a little bit, it kind of fluctuated quite a bit. Um, and again, it was erratic just because of me playing the 50 gram shaft, but I was impressed with the technology. And again, I was missing the center of the face somewhat often. Um, and I still was able to launch that thing 240 plus carry. So yeah. I thought it was, in terms of uh, the forgiveness, and kind of the launch, it's, it delivers. Yeah, you mentioned that the spin was maybe a little bit inconsistent. A lot of that is to do with the direction of the shots you're mm -hmm. hitting. There's a couple of you, you, one that you pulled over the yeah. left, a couple you left that club face wide open. Mm -hmm. When you leave that club face wide open, that ball is, is going to spin a lot more. Yeah. It's going to fly higher, and it's not going to go as far. Mm -hmm. When you get that thing going left, lower left, it's going to spin less. So it's going to roll out a little bit, a little more, maybe not carry as far. So any shot that goes left, it's going to spin less. Mm -hmm. Anything that goes right, it's going to spin more. So that's right. why you're maybe seeing a little bit of that, kind of that spin, kind of maybe a little bit more inconsistency with regards to, to spin. But even still, you're, you know, it was pretty good. Everything was between 3,600 and 4,800 RPM. So it wasn't like a crazy erratic difference in, in spin. Mm -hmm. Even the ones that we grayed out, this, they were still kind of within that, within that area there too. So it was actually kind of pretty consistent. Uh, you did hit the hybrid just a little bit lower then you were hitting your, your, your iron there too. Um, it was still 100 plus feet in the air, so it's still gonna have plenty of stopping power, and the fact that it was spinning at 4,200 is gonna also add to that stopping power for you on the greens. So that's gonna be very helpful to hit mm -hmm. a second shot into a par five, or yeah. a very, very long par three or something. You know, in terms of fitting, you've seen the numbers here, pitching wise, 704 iron, or someone like me to hit. Um, what type of golfer would you fit you know, into the T-Rail irons here. So T-Rail is definitely looking for someone that's wanting a little bit added help to get that ball up in the air and also wanting added distance with the kind of high strength um, iron that, that this, this club's designed with. Um, I'd say you're, you're mid to higher handicap players mm -hmm. for sure. This is for someone that's, you know, looking to maybe pick up a little bit more club speed with say an ultra light shaft such as this, 50 grams. Um, and also picking up a little bit more distance, forgiveness, kind of all, all the above. So, yep. you know, we're looking for game improvement irons. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, golfers out there, if you fall into that category, um, the T-Rail irons obviously deliver in, in all those aspects of the game. I would encourage you to stop into a second swing store, um, speak with master fitters such as Thomas Campbell. Um, also, if you enjoyed our video here, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content in the future. Thomas, thank you for your insight today. Yeah, thanks for coming in.